I was a Kevin Samuels fan, okay? Until he said the cum dump thing and um, I felt offended, but I was offended for personal reasons. Was he lying? No. <laughs> But I didn't want to hear it. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. So I, I often talk about obviously from a male perspective, how men should be vetting women. Mm -hmm. But I'm really, really interested in, from a woman's point of view, how they think they should be vetted by men, right? So because, especially in our community, the idea is that a man should not be vetting a, a woman, especially a black woman. Like, I, I'm the table. I, I, I am perfect just as I am, and you should accept me. Even the, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, I think it's a, is it cosmetics or like a hair care line called As I Am? Like, it's about celebrating the, the goddessness that is a black woman. So from, from a female perspective, how should a black man who's done the work, who has, who is a solid individual by any metric, when he goes out into these streets, mm -hmm. How should he be vetting, evaluating women? Mm, okay, that's a good question. Um, the best way to me is to, one, not have sex with her right off the bat. I'm just being honest because we get um, rose-colored glasses. You think men do? Sometimes, yeah, y'all do. Like, especially if you kind of like, I, just a little bit. I just think sometimes like you stop really paying attention and she'll start performing. So like, just like you're performing to I get her. I think it's the opposite. Ah, I actually it's, think, I think y'all come in without the rose colored glasses, but we come in with the rose colored glasses and we lose the glasses after we smash. Whereas women get the glasses after they smash. What? Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen so many, because what happens is men tend to pedestalize a woman. Okay. So you're never more beautiful and more perfect until when you were the object of my desire. But when I didn't, I didn't, you know, I know what your pussy feels like. I know what it smells like. I know what you look like when you're naked. Like the, the magic for most men dies. That seems lustful. And like, because there was no real relationship dev um, developed, she didn't tap into your, in your psyche. Well, but that's the thing. Men's sexual attraction typically, again, I'm speaking of the rule, not the exception. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's instant. Damn that ass fat, I want to fuck. Whereas women typically, <laughs> typically is, oh, I like the way he da da da. Right, da, right, da. Right, right, so right. It, it's a buildup. It takes time to even, you know what I'm saying? Like going back to the Harvard, I, there's a lot of things I have to do to apply to, to Harvard. The right. interview process, boom, boom, versus, you but, know. But now men are trying to vet women, right? So, so you're going to have to refrain from the, the initial going in. Yeah, but I, I think you put it in a way where if you have sex with her too quickly, it'll be easier for her to fool you. Whereas, as it a dude, is. I'll tell you as a dude, I'm not advocating for men to have sex too quickly. But there is something called post-nut clarity. Have you heard that term? Yeah. So post nut clarity essentially <laughs> <laughs> post nut clarity essentially is like I said when that haze lifts when okay. those rose colored glasses to get off you now for men we come in with those glasses because the lust and oh I gotta die that would her booty feel like this this and that so it can only go down from there whereas for women it can only go up right so. I think you could actually make a better argument. I'm not advocating for this. That once you have sex with her, then you can see her for what she actually is versus okay. the opposite. But see, that's where it gets interesting, right? Is because when, so say you have sex with her and you put it on her, she's going to start performing to ensure that you are happy. So you're not getting the real her. But I wouldn't be as easily fooled. 
<laughs> I don't believe now, that. Because now, guess what? Now I'm in the power position. Like there's a, there's a saying, and I think you kind of alluded to it earlier. It goes that um, everything in life is about sex, except sex. Sex is about power. Mm -hmm, it is. Right. So so the, the power play, especially nowadays, it's, it's going to sound messed up, but it's knocking most women off their high horse. And the only way men can actually do that is everything necessary to get her to submit to you and then submit to you sexually. So like the 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 That sounds manipulative and selfish. You know you you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is it's easier it's easier for a woman that you've had sex I mean that you haven't had sex with to play you than a woman that you have. For men, it's the opposite. It's the exact opposite for women. Okay, all right. So I mean, like, then what are you betting for? Long term traits. Long term what? Long term traits. Like, Long term traits. Yeah, like what's going to translate? Well, I mean, decent men. We're we're, we're vetting more so for what's going to translate into good, good long term partner, uh, good mother. So long term partner and mother. But off top, we're going to want to sleep with you. Well, like I mean, yeah, so of course, there's, there's, right, the yeah. attraction has to be there, right, that we got that. So once you get past that, you're looking for mother and long-term traits, and you want to know how to vet for that. But if you refrain from sex, you're going to be looking at her like she's the best thing since sliced bread, even if she's not because you really want the pussy. Y'all are stupid. <laughs> 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 Explain, break that down. Break yeah, that down. because because then everybody's just wearing masks and nobody gets to the core of the individual because we're just like you're just wanting sex and then she's just wanting your attention, so she's gonna do whatever for that. It, it, vetting is like not even a thought process somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? And then if you treat it like an interview, somebody's gonna get offended because again, you said when somebody says, um, "What do you bring to the table?" They go. I am the table, right? I mean, some OGs will tell you before you go on that date, the first date, beat your meat. Yeah, but that doesn't, I, I don't know. That I, I don't know. Let me tell you this. I think men need to know their purpose, okay? They need to be accountable to a higher power. They need to know their purpose because a woman could have great traits and be an awesome mother, but if she doesn't understand and support your purpose, you will be miserable, right? So she, you, and that, that's something you should be vetting for right off of the bat. Because what I've seen is that women pretend to be into what man, the man is into, get married, get knocked up, and then expect for him to not do that after she's got the ring. And that's not fair to the man because then he loses what made him him. Does that make sense? Like his purpose, what he loves to do, right? Like if you married somebody and they said, you can't do this anymore. You can't record anymore. You can't do black people. We need to talk anymore. How would you feel about that? How would I feel? Yeah. Like what, what would you say? That wouldn't happen. Okay. <laughs> right. But like during your vetting process, you didn't see that that would end up affecting your guys' relationship down the road. You see what I'm saying? So that needs to be right off the bat. Like you need to be discerning, is this woman really supporting me because she believes in the vision or is she supporting me because she sees another vision? Mm. No, I agree. I agree. I think, um, you know, if, 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 if I had to answer that particular question, I would say, number one, it's important that a guy has... Uh, you know, coming to America, talk about sowing your royal oats. There needs to be a season in your life mm -hmm. where not necessarily that you're out in the streets reckless, but like you gain a foundational, firm understanding of who women are. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately what happens, and I think this is what leads to like the red pill rage and things like that. What happens is a lot of boys, mm -hmm. especially boys raised by single mothers, were told this myth of the benevolent, magical, pure, saint woman. Mm 
Yeah, that doesn't exist. You see what I'm saying? And and they have those expectations when they go out into the world. And then when they're met with like women, oh shit, they're actually people. They don't know how to deal with that. Especially when that revelation comes by, I bought this woman flowers. She took them flowers to another nigga house and was bent over. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, he didn't buy her flowers. He, he didn't buy her anything. He didn't do it. God damn thing. So like there needs to be a season where you actually like, Really understand dialogue with women and understand, yo, they're just people. And they're just trying to figure this shit out. And that way, maybe, you know, before you go on a date, like I said, you beat your meat. So, like, now when you're across from the woman, you're not looking through those rose-colored glasses. She's a person again. Right. Because I don't think women understand what that, like, testosterone does to us. Oh, yeah. Like, like that beast. When we want you, you could, your breath could stink, but we want you savage. in this. Men are savage. Y'all are savage. I said that on somebody's show that I was like, y'all are savage and you could care less. But it's the truth. And I don't think women want to understand that men think different. Right? So, okay, fine. Beat your me. But just make sure that you're not investing too much time in somebody who's really seeing something else. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to go on a couple dates, but by like date three or four, you should be able to discern if this person is ideal for you. You got to look at their life, too. You got to be a little bit of stalkerish. You know what I'm saying? What are they doing on social media? How long is she on there? Why she got all that time? Because she's filling her time with social media. She going to try to fill her time with you. Do so you think it's the attention piece? Yes. That she wants a lot of attention. Oh. Yeah. So you got to pay attention to those things because you will become the focus. And you might not want to be. You don't want to be the complete focus because then we won't be able to breathe. And and men, y'all like to breathe. You like the space, right? I want you here, but I don't want you here. You right. feel me? Like, right. <laughs> so you just gotta take your time. Take your not and not too much time though, because like you will drive somebody crazy that way. But I just think men really, I think y'all know right off the bat when you meet her. But if you're damaged and stuff like that, you may second guess it and mess it up. You sabotage it yourself too sometimes. But y'all know. You know if that woman believes in you and can push you to a higher level. You like to be held accountable to a certain extent. And if she doesn't have a backbone, that's not attractive either. So let's let's uh let's talk about this um uh, power couple phenomenon this this power couple ideal of i'm gonna be a boss bitch, and he's gonna be a boss this and we both bosses gonna come together so and then you see women bragging on their phds and how much money they make and all their masculine attributes and characteristics and expecting men to find those things desirable why do you think so many boss women fail at relationships and are typically single? Because the, the balance is really off. And I'm going to tell you this, like from personal experience, like when you're a business owner and um, like always in charge, it is hard to transition from that thought process because you're working, you know, eight hour days, right? And then you're only home for a few hours and then you're expected to like turn this switch off and become just feminine. And it's not, it's just not reality, you know, for women. And they don't want to admit it. They really don't. They don't want to say like, it makes me manly because you have to be somewhat manly when you're running a business. You have to be stern. You have to be those masculine traits for you to be even respected, right? But then, like, how do you turn that switch off when you get home? It's hard. It's not. It's hard. Look, it's hard. It's really hard. But women are like, no, I can do both. And that's where we have to be honest. Women and Men and women are not the same. Women can have businesses. I mean, like the Bible shows that, right? Like the Proverbs 30 women, women, she does a lot of things, but she did those behind the scenes. And you want to know who got the praise for that? Her husband. And then he praised her. Do you see what I'm saying? 
in this society, we want to do all the work and we want him to praise us and we want the world to know it was us. And we're out of order. So there is no, to me, if you want to be completely honest, there is no real way for a woman to be a boss boss and not emasculate her man at some point in the relationship. Why do you think that that is a message that is going to be unpopular? Why do you think there's still that ideal? Yeah, because society has, and I want to say society, the, that first of all, you know, I think the worst thing to America is seeing black couples get together, right? In their divine order. Because when we were married and um, those were, there were movements that happened, we were on one accord and things were changing. Civil rights, all of those things, we were, movements were happening. Um, places were being built up. We were making money. So we're a force to be reckoned with when we're in our divine purposes. But if we cause the paradigm to shift and the woman to feel like she's over the man, it doesn't work out that way. What was your question again? You said, why did I, why do I think that? Why, why, why do people still like glamorize that? So that we can stay divided. Because as long as we stay divided, the true change that needs to happen in society for people to be treated equally and all the things that we complain about won't happen because we're not on the same page. We'll never get there because the man, just being honest, like the man is the leader. Who was deceived in the garden? Mm. That's interesting. Well, so that might be tough for people who don't subscribe to like the judo, uh, yeah, that's Judeo fine. Christian. But, uh, but society, okay. All right. I'll appeal to the American people. When, <laughs> when President Clinton, not President Clinton, but when um, Bill Clinton's wife was running for president against Trump. Right. Okay. When you asked people why they voted for Trump, they said two things. It's not ideal to have a woman as the leader of the free country. And I needed to pick the lesser of the two evils. One thing I do know for certain is when a woman gets power, she is an emotional creature and will make emotional decisions with power. And that's dangerous. It's true. We don't completely think before we hit the button. We think after we hit the button and then now it's too late. So I'm not trying to, I'm gonna, probably gonna get canceled for this because people are pushing for a woman president, but I don't believe that that's okay. I just don't think that women should lead, lead. It's not my job to do that. If that was the case, it would have been designed that way, and it wasn't. Actually, I, I, I don't agree fully. Um, I think women could lead. I think there is a cost, just like you said. Um, because, I mean, the, the pushback often is that, you know, we would be in war all the time and this, this mm -hmm. and that. And like, that's already the reality with male leadership. Right. right. So okay. men are emotional. Men are emotionally immature. Um, and women, you know, uh, they have the power of um, seduction, not just sexual seduction, right. right? the power of influence and things like that. And a lot of times what we fail to realize sometimes some of our greatest male leaders were actually you know, just the, uh, the voice box, the, the mm -hmm. megaphone of a woman, you know, we talk about Cleopatra and, right. and things like that. Which is, which is why I said, okay. So then that still goes back to that. There's a purpose for a woman, but the man is the face of that. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. So what I'm saying is that we are emasculating men out of their roles because we want to be the face. Mm. Where do you think that's going to take us? Like, where, 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 if things don't change, if people don't watch this content, learn about men, learn about women, what, what is the, where are we going? Well, I mean, of course, like babies are not going to be born anymore because nobody's going to want to be responsible for them. I just feel like we're going to go into 
it's going to be destruction in a way because we're just out of order. And there's not, to me, there's probably going to be a point where there's no turning back because everything goes at this point. If somebody can wake up and say, hey, I don't feel like being human today. I think I'm a hippopotamus. We have a problem. If a teacher gets in trouble for not acknowledging a child as a cat, <laughs> we have a problem. Um, we could either go up or go down, but because we're so convinced that we are equal, it looks like we're just gonna go down because we're not equal. The body structures are different. The mentalities are different. The hormones are different. And so um, we're gonna go to the abyss. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be terrible. I'm just <laughs> we're all, we see it, right? Cancel culture, everything. People can't even take a joke nowadays. Right? So that's where we're going. And we won't see people getting married. Like eventually people won't even think that marriage is it actually really it's a joke at this point too now. What's the point, right? So last question, what were your thoughts of the late Kevin Samuels and his work? Oh, okay, so like <laughs> I was a Kevin Samuels fan, okay? Until he said the cum dump thing and um, I felt offended, but I was offended for personal reasons. Was he lying? No. <laughs> but I didn't want to hear it. So I feel like Kevin, um, the platform was needed. I don't think that it was fair that his platform took off because of him being semi disrespectful, you know, but she was disrespectful too. I don't get it wrong. Like her calling on the wrong day, I get that, you know. Um, but what he did was valuable. Like I was on this show the other day and these men were lying. Um, they called themselves the greatest black men ever, but they just hold no truths on this show, okay? And at the end of it, I was like, you know what? I wish Kevin was back because y'all would not be able to be doing these things right now because y'all are idiots. I would prefer <laughs> the truth, even no matter how harsh it is, so I can learn to process that, than people still trying to get in that mantle that Kevin was in and starting to lie and pander to women. I don't need nobody to pander to me. I need you to tell me why I'm not successful at what I'm doing and what I need to do to change. And that's what he did no matter how much we liked it or not. So I like him. I'm sad a little bit, to be honest, but A, you know, I was sad and offended. Bitter black women killed Kevin Samuels. <laughs>